Okay, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Let's uh, pray and we'll continue with our study on the subject of faith. Uh, can one, one of us from the class uh, start with prayer today? Anyone? Lord. Lord, we thank you for this day, Lord Jesus. Lord Father, as we are learning about faith, Lord, help us to grow more in faith and help us to be, uh, help us to do what you want us to do and accomplish things that you want us to accomplish um, in the community, in the places that you have put us, Lord Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Uh, I noticed that somebody online also was trying to pray, but uh, we couldn't hear the online student. So we'll just fix that. Sorry about that. Uh, yes. Uh, so while that is being fixed, we'll, we'll go ahead. We'll start off our discussion. So we are at chapter 7. In the last couple of sessions, we talked about Abraham the father of our faith and the steps of faith, how he grew stronger in believing in God uh, and trusting God for the promise that God gave him. Now we'll talk about a couple of connected aspects, faith that we are discussing, right? And we have an understanding about faith, but there are some connected, um, uh, again, aspects, if you would want to call them, which need to be understood for our faith to be effective. So that's what we will study about today. So we will talk about hope and we will talk about love. Faith is important, but there are some other things that if they are not activated, our faith will be ineffective. So that is why we will talk about hope and we will talk about love. So first let's talk about hope. Hope. What is hope? Anyone? Uh, do you have a? Do you have an understanding of hope? What? What do we uh, say? Hope is. Yeah, trusting something to happen, or you know, we would have said hoping for something to happen. That is hope. Uh, how else can we can we describe it? Huh, expectation. So we are thinking that something will happen. Right, um, and we are looking forward to that to happen. Like, you know, uh, we will graduate, we will start a business, or um, uh, people are expecting to get married. Like, you'll get married, or you know, you'll build a house, or you launch out in ministry, or other expectations. Like, we'll pray for people, we will say see healings, we will be able to proclaim God's word with power. So what is all this? Visually, like we have this in our minds where we are saying these things would happen and uh, we're looking forward to those things. So we're trusting that all this will happen. That is what hope is. Now, if you want to use two words to describe it, we could say it is desire and expectation. That's what hope is. We have desire and we have expectation. So we trust that God will cause these things to take place. That is what hope is. Now hope, um, it is, you know, as far as the Bible is concerned, it's not just a, a, an expectation or a desire that may or may not happen. Because in English or other subjects, uh, other languages, that's how we uh, look at hope. It may happen, it may not happen. Like, I hope that it stops raining today. It may or may not happen. So that is the hope that people understand in most languages. But when we say biblical hope, biblical hope is sure. We are definite that those things will happen. Okay, so that is what the difference between 
uh, hope in general and biblical hope is it's a it's a sure kind of an expectation and a desire it is given in god's word for us so we place our expectation in it so this is how we look at hope now when it comes to faith faith is an um sort a very strong unquestionable confidence that we have in the word of god that things are done things are already done so faith is in the present you remember that scripture now faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen now faith is a reality and faith is in the present so we have faith in the present where is hope hope is in the future okay so we have faith and that is what will bring god's promises into fulfillment in our lives so for example you know we uh, let's say uh, when it comes to healing we are hoping we are hoping that we will be fine that we will be healthy the pain will go or um, uh, you know that uh, injury will will be completely um, healed up all this is our hope but what is faith faith says that i'm already healed it's in the now i already believe it's a done deal faith is it's done deal it starts with hope faith begins with hope faith is like a precursor or uh, we kind of we start with hope and then we come into faith because we've come to a place where now we are sure yes it is god's word god has spoken it is done it is mine it will happen that is faith where faith is coming to a place where all the questions are like now it's a done deal there are no questions asked we are 100% confident so that is faith but where how do we get to faith it generally starts with hope it starts with an expectation from god it starts there okay so are you all getting what i'm trying to say yeah so they are connected but they are slightly different hope is a desire and an expectation but faith is complete confidence where we believe that it is done for us but faith will come after hope okay so where does hope come from hope hope and faith both come from god's word so hope comes from the promise of god we can say right so it starts there or you know when we see something in god's word like for example we are learning about manifesting the gifts of the holy spirit we are talking about being strengthened in the word and ministering the word to others so we may look at um what god has made available right around us in the lives of other people we look at them and we get some hope we feel like wow if that person is flowing i can flow if that person is ministering i can minister it's a starting point because there there's a small desire that has started oh why not you know god can do this for me also so it's starting there but then we meditate in god's word we we uh, you know completely uh, settle our minds on god's promise so that is the place of faith where now it's no more uh, uh, you know like where it's just a desire it's more than that where we are established in god's word and we are sure that this can manifest through my life as well okay you're all getting it yeah so this is how we look at hope and faith they are connected faith is in the present oh, oh, oh. <coughs> sorry hope is in the future so hope is a an expectation um that god will fulfill his promise now here is another very beautiful scripture from hebrews chapter 6 and verse 19 so if one of us can turn to that and read uh, we will explain that hebrews 6 and verse 19 this hope we have as an anchor of the soul both sure and steadfast and which enters the presence behind the will mm mm-hmm. yes 
So what does it say about hope? Hope is the anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast. Remember, we said biblical hope is sure. It's not, yeah, maybe, maybe not. No, it's sure. It is sure and steadfast. Hope is the anchor of the soul. So what does that mean? When there is a ship and it does not have an anchor, what will happen? It'll stray. It'll just go anywhere and you can't you know, find it. Uh, if there is a kite and you know it gets cut, it's, you can't catch that kite anymore. In the wind, it'll go anywhere, it'll get stuck. Okay. Now, if we don't have hope in us, in the soul, the soul of a man or our soul, you all get soul, right? We've talked a lot about it. It's the emotional person. It's the intellectual person where our mind and intellect are, are uh, you know, our soul, we call it. Hope is the anchor of the soul. If we lose hope, what is the opposite of that? There is no hope. Living our life with zero hope, no hope, nothing will happen, what will happen? You know, everything works for somebody else, nothing works for me. That is hopelessness, opposite of hope. There is no hope. Word of God, no, I don't think I can learn word, God's word. I don't think I can flow in the gifts of the Spirit. I, I don't think I can pray. What is happening? There is no hope. What about your future brother? What about your future sister? Nothing. I'm not expecting anything. If God does, let him know. If he doesn't do, let him not do. You know, we think we're being very spiritual by saying things like that. But it's not how we must be. Because we have an expectation from our God. We know who He is. He's so good. Okay, He's so great. He's so generous. And uh, He's powerful. So there is an expectation. We are not hopeless. What does it say about the soul that lacks hope? Anchorless. Life goes anywhere. Purposeless. Meaningless. Losing hope is a very dangerous thing. It says here, hope is the anchor of the soul, both sure and steady. And it also says, which enters the presence behind the veil. Okay? Enters the presence behind the veil is, uh, it, it's referring to the very presence of God in the tabernacle, the Holy of Holies. So what is there? What is there present with God? Hope. It's there with God. Hope starts with God. When we come to know who God is, right? It births hope in our hearts. It births hope in our soul. That's the starting place where we say, my God will do it. I know. I'm expecting. I'm desiring. Things will change. Things will become better. Things will, you know, I, I will be able to conquer. So we are overcoming that state of hopelessness. And that comes from God himself. That's what we read. In Hebrews 6, from God himself arises hope. From the presence of God, hope arises and it becomes the anchor of our soul. So you and I as believers, we don't have to be hopeless. We don't have to live a life you know, without hoping in God. We can hope in God because we serve a good God. So hope is the anchor of our soul. Right uh, now, let's go back to our notes. So, hope is a desire, it's an expectation, it's the anchor of the soul. Hope and faith work together. You can even call them something like twins. So, hope starts, faith comes in. It's always like that. So, things begin with hoping, right? And then eventually we settle in a place of faith. So, uh, when we expect God for something, you know, what pulls that into our life or what pulls that into our reality, our faith. 
Now, if we don't establish in faith, that is not hope at all. Because biblical hope is sure. Eventually, we are established in faith and we are able to walk in those things. So this is how faith and hope work hand in hand. We need hope in God. We need some, um, we need an anchor. So personally for each one of us, this is an exercise that you can do. I do it myself. Um, it's to visualize the promises of God over our lives. We've talked about the father of our faith, Abraham, Genesis 15, where you know, Abraham is praying to God and he's saying, God, um, you know, you've not given me a son. You've not given me uh, uh, descendants. So he's just talking to God and he's saying, like, what do you want, God? Uh, I, and by then he already had, you know, another son. So he was thinking that maybe that's how God has planned for his descendants to be. But God gives him a picture in Genesis 15. He says, no, Abraham, my plan for you is I'm going to give you many descendants through the son of promise. Then he gives him this image of look at the stars in the sky, look at the sand on the shore. Okay. So there is a visualization for Abraham when he's wondering how many descendants will I have? There's a picture. How many stars are there in the sky? Millions, billions, bazillion. No number is good enough for us to track, right? Countless. So what is God telling Abraham? Abraham, your children will be countless. How many sand uh, grains are there on the seashore? Anyone counted in your free time? No, we don't have that kind of free time. We can't count. It's countless. So what is God saying? Visual picture. Countless. Your descendants will be countless, Abraham. So as a desert man, every time he would have gone, like he's walking in the desert, right? Morning, evening, night. He's always looking at the sand. He's always looking at the sky. And that's a reminder from God. This is my promise to you, Abraham. I have not forgotten. So what does it trigger in his heart? Hope. Yeah, God has said, as these, uh, you know, sand is countless, stars are countless, my descendants will be countless. Visual image. So how do we apply this in our own personal lives? Based on the word of God or the promise of God, you and I can pray and ask God, God, give me pictures, right? Let's say that we are weak and we are sick and all, but as we pray and we understand God's word, hope starts. Yeah, I can receive healing. I can be well. Then there is this image in our minds when, where we are seeing ourselves fit, fine, being able to do everything that we need to do. That's the image in our minds, right? If God has called us to do something, we're able to see ourselves. Yeah, we're going places, you know, we're meeting people. What is this? Imagination. Imagination is a gift from God. It's a good gift. We can use it for the wrong reasons also, right? When our mind goes into uh, sinful things, evil things, lustful things, uh, it actually damages the potential of our imagination. But God has given us the imagination to use it for hope and faith. Now, when our imagination can paint pictures like this, we have good pictures as we're looking at our future, about our ministry, about our personal life, our health, our finances, many things, right? So what you and I can do, I told you an exercise, go back home and just see what, what pictures of yourself do you have in your imagination? What are you believing God for? Like, what can you see happening in the future? If it is not uh, as per God's word, right? God says, I have good plans for you. If we are, our imagination is, oh, something terrible is going to happen. This will not work out. That will not work out. Those are birthed from fear and not from faith, right? So uh, we can always check our imagination and see how far uh, am I able to visualize the promise of God. 
it's a it's actually a you know it, it's incredible what god has given us as imagination yes or no right you could be sitting here but you could be in disneyland while the teacher is teaching right but that's not how we use it it's amazing the capacity of imagination and it's free you don't have to give 1 rupee to imagine but god says it's powerful i've given you the capacity to imagine my promises over your own life and that's how pictures of hope in the mind of abraham that drew faith and what does faith do faith will draw the manifestation of the promise that's how it works hope faith and manifestation all right so this is how we use um our imagination now let's talk a little bit about uh, are we all okay about hope and faith yeah okay we have some clarity now let's talk about faith and feelings okay so we know god's word second corinthians 5 7 it says we walk by faith and not by sight what does that mean to walk by faith and not by sight yes we have faith in what god has said what does not by sight mean yes so even when we don't see the manifestation yet faith it, 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 says it's done right we still believe that is how god wants us to be do you remember anyone among the disciples of jesus who struggled to believe without see yeah that's right thomas thomas right what did thomas say thomas said that i won't believe till i see jesus is nail pierced hands and put my finger through it like check test confirm then i will believe but jesus says you know those who do not see and yet believe they are more blessed because when we talk about faith faith is when you know we we don't depend on sight or the tangible um uh, or let's say you know uh the manifestation in the now because in the heart faith already says that it is done so as far as sight is concerned or as far as uh, feelings are concerned it may not be aligned to the promise of god okay for example let's let's take this example you and i are born again okay you and i are in christ jesus and uh, you and i are uh, blessed right with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places you and i are anointed it says we are one with christ and all the believers all the saints we are anointed when you woke when you wake up some mornings do you feel oh i am so blessed i am so anointed is that how you wake up like you just jump out of your bed excited happy every day not really sometimes the feelings though this is the reality our feelings may go in the opposite direction yeah this is the truth i am blessed i am so blessed i am a child of god i am the son of the king i am the daughter of the king but sometimes you're not feeling like that so then what to do i don't feel today i don't feel like the daughter of the king what to do we can't depend on our feelings feelings come and go feelings will go up feelings will come down so if we wait for our feelings to stabilize and then we say god i will believe in you when i feel 
when i feel faith or you know when worship is good then yes it's a good day for me or when i have prayed like this intensely then it, no 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 feeling or no feeling the word of god is the truth that's how you and i need to live our lives even if we don't feel every morning we don't feel like ah, i don't feel like you know i'm victorious today declare it anyway no i am victorious no i am a conqueror i'm more than a conqueror through him who loves me feelings are there no but it's truth is greater than the feelings so that is how faith works faith you know should not be uh, dependent on our feelings whether we feel like it or we don't we need to have faith that's how faith works okay so this is something that you and i need to practice now faith is based on what faith is based on no faith is based on what word of god isn't it faith is based on the word of god faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of god now tell me is the word of god steady or not yeah what about feelings up and down so if you hold on to feelings you will have a roller coaster ride okay but if you hold on to the word it's steady every day it's the same it doesn't change what god has spoken who god is his attributes it doesn't change so this is the challenge for a believer faith should be anchored to the word don't wait for you know a sense of excitement a feeling of high like you you know you feel high uh, doing some spiritual activities that's when i will believe no no whether i feel like it or i don't feel like it god's word is the same so i am washed by the blood of jesus i am the beloved of christ i am blessed i feel like it or i don't feel like it that's the truth i believe that i am blessed you know i believe that i am anointed so this is how you and i as believers need to lead our lives of faith not depending on the feelings otherwise it will become more like you know thomas's story where we are depending on uh, you know our uh, human feelings now having said all of this are feelings good or bad how about the online batch are feelings good or bad good okay it's good until and unless we're not driven by it um is what kushbu says well yes that's fine so feelings are god given so they are not bad feelings indicate to us uh about what is happening in our soul right so it can it can show us whether our soul is healthy or not healthy and based on that you know we can work on our soul so it's not bad feelings are not bad in general to make our natural decisions we depend on our feelings but as believers we have to rise above the feelings sometimes feelings will not be there yet we have to go and do it you know i've heard this said um that uh, especially when we are doing ministry right some days you wake up and you don't feel like you just don't feel like going and praying for someone you don't feel like going and preaching the word but the, but if you are called you and i are called uh we need to come to a place where we say whether i feel like it or i don't feel like it god has called me to do it he will work by his spirit i'm just going to go okay so we just go we just get up we get ready we go and we trust god you will do what you have promised in your word imagine imagine if somebody you know some of us as we are ministering if we wait for the days when we are feeling very anointed only that day i'll preach how many days will it be we might be able to count on our fingers only a few days we might feel very anointed other days feeling is not matching doesn't matter go by the word 
don't depend on the feelings i will pray when i feel like praying how how much will will we pray when do we feel like praying can't depend on these things it's up and down but what is steady word of god right word of god and faith in god's word and which is why we must hold on to the word and not move as per our feelings okay so yes uh, any questions no okay let's move on now let's talk a little bit about faith and doubt there are instances in scripture as we've seen situations where jesus expected his disciples to take charge but they did not and he rebuked them he rebuked them and said you know where is your faith you faithless uh, generation faithless and perverse generation he got upset that they did not have faith so there are three incidents in uh, our notes here one where jesus is walking on the water and the disciples think that it is a ghost um, and then you know he peter believes and uh, he says okay god lord ask me to come to you peter jesus calls him out and peter is able to walk on the water but after some time he loses his faith and he starts sinking at that time thank god jesus actually helps him out but he missed faith in those moments there was doubt in his heart and whenever doubt comes this is the result right unbelief comes this is the result another time when the uh, disciples are trying to cast out a demon and they are not able to do it so then jesus says you couldn't do it you know um this kind needs prayer and fasting but actually he was pointing to their faith that one must increase their faith through prayer and fasting okay uh, and the third one is calming the storm when there's a storm they get scared but jesus rebukes the storm and he's upset with the disciples and he says how come you know you guys didn't uh, uh you didn't take charge or you didn't display your authority demonstrate your authority so jesus had an expectation from the disciples to use their faith but they did not why because they had unbelief they doubted now how do we understand this you see uh, last i think two classes ago or something also we had this question what if we have some doubt right because in um, mark 11:23 it says that one who does does not doubt in his heart does not doubt in his heart and speaks to the mountain that's when the mountain is uprooted so how do we how do we deal with questions that you and i have in our minds see faith is of the heart whereas we can have questions in our minds so we must not confuse the questions as doubt or unbelief we don't have all the answers to explain how god's promise will come through but that does not mean it is a doubt or unbelief okay so as far as there is faith in the heart so these are two separate things mind heart so as long as there is faith in the heart things work there can be questions doubts confusions in the mind that's fine it happens to all of us it happens to the best of us but in the heart right it is a settled thing that deep assurance that peace that says you know my god is there he is my strength he will help me he will uh, release that breakthrough for me so in the heart faith is there and faith is strong that's what we are talking about as long as we have faith in the heart and we don't have unbelief in the heart faith will work okay so we need to develop faith in our hearts where is faith going to come from yes right so word of god so we need to spend time in the word of god the more we spend time in the word of god faith arises develop faith in the heart questions can be there 
confusions can be there anxiety all that can be there in the mind but that doesn't mean that is unbelief okay uh, so faith in the heart is what we are looking for and we can increase our faith so we'll come to that we have an entire chapter on how to increase our faith so we will discuss about it then so today we talked about faith and hope faith and feelings faith and doubt now let's talk about faith and love okay faith and love uh, let's read from galatians chapter 5 and verse 6 could one of us read it out galatians 5 6 For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything, but faith working through love. Okay, so here is another key. For faith to be effective, for faith to be productive, what does Paul say? Galatians five verse six. Towards the end of that, he says, "Faith working through." love okay can everyone say this together faith working through love once again faith working through love so this is what god wants imagine if we have faith but we don't have love faith will not work see sometimes when we want um uh, let's say you know a, a machine to work you need some parts in it you can't make it work independently you have to connect a couple of things we may have a socket and we may have the uh, you know we may have the cable and we may want to plug it in but we need an adapter without that it will not get plugged in so what is that ingredient which is required to make faith effective love okay in first corinthians chapter 13 paul writes uh, he says that faith without love is unproductive he he talks about you know many things over there about how we um, we can we can move in the gifts of the spirit we we prophesy we speak in tongues we do many things but if there is no love he says there is no point so faith needs to be undergirded by love that's when it's going to be effective that's when it's going to be productive and faith without love will not work so in verse 13 if you're still there in first corinthians 13 can somebody read that verse last one and now these three remain faith hope and love mm. but the greatest of these is love yes notice faith hope and love we talked about how faith and hope work and what faith and hope are but he says these three remain so there are three aspects for us to consider I can't say that I will live a life of faith. I don't care about love. It won't work because there are three ingredients: faith, hope, and love. And guess what? Which is the greatest of all three? Love. So, love must be the motivation to our. faith now what does this mean when we say faith should be the motivation to our uh, sorry love should be the motivation to our faith when we study uh, 1 corinthians chapter 13 this passage was written to explain the right way to operate in the gifts of the holy spirit in 1 corinthians 12 paul talks about these are the gifts of the spirit nine gifts are listed there In First Corinthians fourteen, he talks about how to operate in the gifts of the Spirit in an orderly fashion. But what did he do in between? 
he wrote about love why because when we talk about ministry he's saying god has given you what you need through the holy spirit all the gifts flow in it flow in it like this but motivation has to be love he says we can do all this but if we don't have love it's meaningless love for whom love for the people so when we are serving people when we are doing ministry when we are doing uh, you know uh, uh, when we are uh, even like family or whatever if there is no love if we are just doing it by a sense of duty or if we are just doing it you know as an obligation or we are just doing it because there's no other choice or there could be other reasons right we do ministry because of pride or fame or i want to be known like this now i want people to appreciate me right uh, and we get puffed up whenever we do something we feel like yeah people should come and pat my back that's why i'm doing what i'm doing what if people don't appreciate what if nobody notices the work that we are doing you know will will that make us a smaller person in any way imagine im just imagine okay praise god he's so good you know he does send appreciation encouragement our way but if we serve and there is zero appreciation zero you know uh, congratulations on your good work will we still continue to do what we are doing zero recognition we should because our motives have to be right so this is the more important thing in the book code of honor i think uh, uh, another course right a uh, minister's foundation we will read we'll study about all these things that more than what we do why we do it is important that's what paul is saying faith hope and love the greatest of these is love why am i doing what i'm doing because i love god because i love people right appreciation recognition fame yes or no doesn't matter we will still serve because we love god so much we you know love god's people so much that is our intention motivated by love even faith i want to move the mountain i want to command the disease you know i want to uh, rebuke the storm why are you doing it why am i doing it what is the motivation if it's not about love if it's about oh, i want to show off how much faith i have people should talk about my faith have you seen this person great faith amazing faith doesn't make sense it's not aligned to what the word of god says motivation must be love now again looking at the same passage the word which is used there in the greek it is agape okay love faith hope love agape in the greek language there are at least um, four words that mean love so why is it that paul is using agape here agape is the god kind of love god so loved the world god when he loved the world what did he do he gave he sacrificed that is agape in other words god's love is sacrificial unconditional love there are other kinds of love which we recognize among you know as human beings and in the greek there are other words also there's another word called storge which is a uh, uh, love in the family there's a love word called philia which is a uh, love between love between friends and there is a uh, uh, eros which is uh, sexual love between husband and wife so there are all these kinds of loves which are described in the word of god but in first corinthians 13 paul uses agape agape unconditional sacrificial love so what we'll do is we have uh, just about 5 minutes left so i don't think i can do justice to um first corinthians 13 if we rush through it so we'll stop here okay and we will pick up from the next class but here's the point faith 
without love will be unproductive yes asking something for yes. my friend yeah uh like something he need or something he want job or some some physical need mm. so whom do i love first god or him like mm. to whom i show love first to that faith okay uh well yeah first i've not thought about it but you remember when uh, jesus Uh, they are asked Jesus, which is the greatest commandment. He says, "Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with you know all your mind, all your strength." So, I think God first. Our love for people starts there, and then of course He says, "Love your neighbor." But the order in which He said is first God, then neighbor. So I think God first. So we have to keep this in our mind, or it's like, okay, we know it, wala thing. Mm. Yeah. See, initially we can try to keep it in our mind, and then it becomes subconscious, where it's it's already there. We don't have to keep reminding ourselves each time. Yeah. Okay. All right. So uh, with that, let's stop for now, and we'll talk more about First Corinthians thirteen on Friday. and a reminder about the assignment submission for faith i think today right today is the tomorrow okay yeah tomorrow so please make sure uh, that you submit before the uh, last date thank you